In this video, we'll take a look at the difference between polymodeling and CAD modeling. We'll analyze the difference in topology, weigh the pros and cons of each method, and go over some of the applications. Bear in mind, I'll be coming at this from the perspective of a digital artist and designer with experience in the media and entertainment space. Before we begin, let's define polymodeling and CAD modeling. Let's start with polymodeling. So polymodeling can be defined as the process by which verts, edges, and faces are manipulated using modeling operations to create 3D models suitable for a pipeline developed for VFX and games. Some packages that are commonly used to achieve this are 3ds Max, Maya, and Blender. CAD modeling, on the other hand, can be defined as the process by which surfaces and solids are manipulated to create 3D models. These models are widely used in a variety of manufacturing and engineering pursuits. Some packages that are commonly used are Fusion 360, Rhino, and SolidWorks. Now that we have defined this, let's go over the topology of a polymodel and a CAD model. Polymodels are composed of the following mesh components, verts, edges, and faces. These components also possess normals, which help in describing the direction in which they are pointing, that is inside or outside. Polymodels are shells. They are devoid of thickness and volume and are completely hollow on the inside. They are limited in resolution and no matter how much you subdivide them, they will always be a break in the curvature at the edge where one face ends and another begins. CAD models on the other hand are composed of curved surfaces and solids. Unlike polygonal meshes, they have thickness and volume. They also have infinite resolution, meaning curved surfaces are infinitely smooth without any interruptions. Let's move on to the pros and cons. Polymodeling allows for artistic freedom and is great for achieving complex organic forms like characters and creatures. They deform and animate well and are also easy to render and visualize. However, the modeling process is extremely tedious and time consuming depending on the model's complexity of course. And because it is limited in resolution and imprecise, it isn't suitable for manufacturing objects. Polymodeling is a destructive process there are ways in which you can model non-destructively in polymodelers, however these practices are not considered industry standard and are only used in concept design and pre-visualization. CAD modeling allows us to achieve a high level of complexity when it comes to hard surface objects. It can outperform any polymodeler when it comes to using booleans. It just can't be achieved as easily with polygons even with powerful add-ons like box cutter and hard ops for Blender. A lot of CAD programs come equipped with a design tree that allows you to go back and make edits to your model, making the modeling process non-destructive. However, these programs can be overly complex and intimidating. CAD modeling is also terrible for creating organic subjects. You cannot enjoy the same level of artistic freedom polymodelers allow. To deform and animate a CAD model properly, it will have to be converted into a polygonal mesh and retopologized. Now let's take a look at their respective applications. Polymodeling is suited for VFX and gaming pipelines. Hence, it is used extensively in films, games, TV shows, animation and advertisements, and anything else that comes under the media and entertainment banner. CAD models are more suited for manufacturing and engineering since it is dimensionally accurate. It is however used in films and TV to design sets and to create physical props for actors to interact with. In the last few years, CAD modeling has also been leveraged by concept designers and game artists to design or craft hard surface objects. In conclusion, polymodeling is primarily employed in VFX and games, while CAD modeling is used in manufacturing and engineering and enjoys some limited application in the entertainment design pipeline. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it informative and I'll talk to you in the next one.